Hello, my name is Nicole, and today we're going to get into Ruth chapter 3. I'm reading out of the Life Application Study Bible. And this particular chapter is titled, Ruth Follows Naomi's Plan. Ruth and Boaz at the Threshing Floor. Now, in the previous chapters, we learn that Ruth is one for listening to instruction. Ruth is loyal. Naomi loves her daughter-in-law. She's helping her out. She is strategically setting her up to be in the right place at the right time. And some of you all have been praying those kind of prayers. Lord, just guide my feet. Put me in the place where I need to be. You may want to be in a different job in a different relationship or maybe you don't want to be in any relationship maybe you want to move on with your life in a new city maybe there's some things you're desiring you're hoping for whatever it is you've got to make sure that you have a plan and sometimes that plan may not be created by you it may be a plan that's created by someone else that God has used to help you and sometimes what we do is we're not always listening. We're not always listening. We're not always watching for signs. Sometimes right away our guard comes up when we should be letting our guard down when certain messengers come into our lives. And I'm not talking about just any messengers. We're talking about messengers that God has ordained to come in and give us a plan for whatever it is that we desire sometimes we can be so overwhelmed and stressed that we don't know how to go about doing something so Ruth following Naomi's plan being that she was a young woman a widow in a place that she had never been in before it would have made sense right to listen to wisdom and that's just what she did so let us get into Ruth chapter 3. One day, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not try to find a home for you, where you will be well provided for? Is not Boaz with whose servant girls you have been, a kinsman of ours? Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Let me stop right there. Some of you all that's looking for a job, the Lord has been speaking to you and telling you to make sure that you are ready to make sure you've got the quality clothes or you've got the tools that you need or you have your car fixed and you are just ready to go out there and do what needs to be done when a phone call comes through. You see, there's a preparation that takes place when one gives you a plan or when you have created your own plan. Hopefully you prayed about it and God is in it. Then you've got to prepare. You don't want to wait till the last minute. You want to make sure that you travel the route that you need to go. So that way when the day comes, you're not the late one. You're not the problem one. You're not the one who looks like he or she's not serious. Lord Jesus. I'm talking to some of you all because the Lord says you don't prepare yourself like you're supposed to. Your mindset is not where it needs to be. And that's why opportunities are not coming like you wish. Because when the messengers of the Lord come to you or when the plan is given to you, you always want to uh, go elsewhere. You always want to change the plan. You want to create your own strategy. And it's not working for some of you. It's just not working. So let's see this advice that Naomi is giving her. She says in verse 3, wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the thr threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. Sometimes we go into establishments and we just assume that everybody is going to just help us out. Sometimes we sit amongst individuals and we just assume that what they're going to say to us is what is going to help us for that particular time period oh but the Lord says sometimes well, you just have to wait it's not that people don't want to help you sometimes the timing is just not right and so some people are bad mouthing others and saying oh well you're not doing this for me you're not helping me and I don't know why you're and see that's why I don't deal with but the Lord says wait wait you see he has to align certain things some there's protocol 
There's various policies and procedures. Sometimes the enemy is at work. You don't want to go into something where the enemy is going to block you. So God is going to set up his angels to do some things on your behalf. You see, once again, there's preparation that takes place with yourself, but there's also preparation that takes place in the spiritual realm. And if we don't have the mindset to think that way, then, well, we're going to get caught up in the natural and end up working on the side of the enemy, cursing folks that shouldn't be cursed, getting attitudes with people that you shouldn't be getting an attitude with, um, knocking yourself basically out of whatever it is that God plans on blessing you with. So Ruth didn't argue. She didn't question. She didn't, you know, oh, I don't know what now. What is it again you want me to do? And why do you want me to do that? Sometimes we question too much. The Lord says sometimes we question wisdom when we should just be following through and doing what wisdom asks of us. And so this is what Ruth did. Um, Naomi told her, then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. So there's a certain degree of observation that takes place, right? There's certain notes that you might need to write down concerning whatever it is that you are called to do, okay? Whether it is God calling you or whether it is someone within your circle, but you've got to note some things down. People don't take notes. I hate to say it, not all, but a lot of people do not take notes. They think they can keep everything inside of their mind, and then they think people are going to keep reminding them, and it's not going to happen. If you don't write down the plan, if you don't keep up with the notes, if you don't print off the paperwork that needs to be printed off, if you don't go where you need to go, if you don't keep track of the emails and who you contacted and all of that, then what's going to happen is, is that when the opportunity comes, you're going to be ill prepared and someone else is going to get that opportunity. You see, but Ruth, she listened. Let's keep reading in verse five. I will do whatever you say. See, that's all God wants from us sometimes. That's all the messengers of God wants. They're telling you, listen, I prayed for you. I fasted. I'm, I, I, I have the experience in. I'm telling you that if you go down this pathway, if you turn left, it's not going to work out for you. You need to go right. Ruth didn't put up a fight. She didn't come up with a bunch of excuses. She didn't knock down every suggestion, idea, strategic plan, what have you. Okay. But some of you all do that. Instead, she just said, I will do whatever you say. That's why some of you all, you, have, you don't have the kind of relationships with your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, best friend, you know, um, co-workers and so forth like you should because you don't listen. You don't listen. And people try to save you from accidents and heart, heartache and everything else. But you just say, no, I'm just going to do it my way. Lord Jesus. But see, Ruth said, I will do whatever you say. She had a trusted advisor. And some of you all need to get the kind of people around you who you truly trust. Because sometimes people have problems doing what is asked because they don't trust the messenger. So pray and ask the Lord to help you trust the messenger. Trust the advisor. Those godly individuals that are only trying to help. And then some will say, well, I did do that in the past. And I'll tell you, oh, some of these people, I mean, I went down this way and then I ended up here. And, uh, well, forgive. It just might be that this person has matured since then spiritually. But you can always test the spirits, right? Okay, let's keep reading. I will do whatever you say, verse 5. Ruth answered in verse 6. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. Just the idea that a mother-in-law is telling her something for some people just, ugh, it makes cold chills go up their spine. It doesn't have to be a mother-in-law. It could be any, anyone who God is using to talk to you about something you prayed about. In verse 7, when Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down and at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, she followed instructions, see, and lay down. 
in verse eight in the middle of the night something startled the man and he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet now the lord says that some women if they were put in this position they would be seductive and try to have sex with the man okay and some women do that just to get ahead they remove their clothes they listen to what the man is telling them and then once they have done the deed the next thing we know they may get the position for a season and then have some problems later on because once you start something with some people they're going to keep expecting it but this woman she didn't do that she didn't do that so in verse 9 and you could tell he was a respectable individual because he says who are you he asked and she says, I'm your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me since you are a kinsman redeemer. You see, he was respectful of her. He could have very well taken advantage of her. But he didn't do that. And some women, you want these opportunities, but you don't carry yourself in a way that's respectable. And so that's why you end up getting what you get. Lord Jesus, amen. Like I say in so many audio, I can speak like this because I know a little something. Okay? You do things in your life and then you wonder why certain things happen. You see, in my early 20s, I thought, well, I'm going to do things in the way that the world has told me. And in this way, I could be able to get this, that, and the other. Okay? So, you go about meeting an individual that individual likes you you go out on a few dates the person says they're gonna help you with this that and the other but in my case it didn't happen people didn't keep their promise okay and that's even worse now that you have given heart mind body and soul and that person's not even gonna help you because they're too busy thinking about someone else or something else so we've got two respectable people, you know, respectful of themselves, respectful of each other. Even in an, in an environment where it could very well be intimate, but it's not. Okay, so in verse 10, the Lord bless you, my daughter. See, he considered her to be a daughter. So that right there tells you that she was quite young and he was an older man. Uh-oh. So for some of you all dating older, hmm. Let us continue. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men. Wow. That speaks volumes to some of you all. You see, you want to date older. But some of these encounters aren't working out because the, these older men pick up on you wanting younger men or somebody closer to your age and you really don't want to be with them rather you want to be with their money oh lord jesus some of you all you have read some of my articles on other sites and you know that it's not a good idea to just go off dating someone but you don't have a clue as to why you truly want to be in a relationship with someone and we're talking specifically those that are dating older other than what they can give you and you know people have emotions people at times want longevity okay some people are looking for a wife and so if you are showing signs that you are still very much into men that are your age or if you are a, a young man dating older women and they pick up that you still are into people your age or younger then hmm the likelihood of the relationship surviving is not going to be very good. And they're definitely not going to share things with you over a long period of time, like money, cars, houses, and whatever else, because you're showing that you're still very immature. And some may have even been called that, Lord Jesus. Okay. Not only being spiritually immature, but immature just in wisdom and uh, conversation. Okay, so for some, you won't be able to survive dating someone older because you are just showing that you're not really ready. Even though you say one thing, that mature person is going to watch your mannerisms and see whether or not you truly 
mean what you say. Okay? So he's observing Ruth. He said, you have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. Notice he threw in some social classes there. Huh. Even back then, there were women doing that sort of thing. Verse 11, and now my daughter, don't be afraid. He called her daughter again. Okay. And now my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. Wow. Okay, so for those of you all who say, well, sometimes these women, they get into these relationships because they need a father figure or maybe the man, you know, didn't have a daughter. So she's just kind of like a daughter to him. Well, in this particular situation, he is referring to her as such because she is very young. He does not have that type of connection with her on that intimate level right now. Okay. So that right there shows you that he was not seeking after a younger woman. The woman showed up at his feet. Ooh, wow. Some of you all never looked at it like that. You're so busy sitting around waiting, waiting, waiting for somebody to show up at your door because that's what the church told me, because that's what my mama said or what have you. Well, sometimes you have to strategically put yourself where you need to be. In order for opportunity to come so I hope that some of you all are free today especially some of you single women are free today as a result of this story okay let us continue now he's putting her at ease because he says don't be afraid in verse 11 and he's also letting her know that he's going to do for her all that she asks Wow I know some of you all wish you could be in a relationship like that Wow, you're just going to do what? Yes, I am. Wow. That's a person that is showing their true character. They really care about you. They really love you. Some people get turned off by that. Okay, what's the what's the fine print? She says she's going to do everything I tell her. I mean, of course, within reason, right? Oh, I don't know. He's saying that he's going to do this, that, and the other for me. Okay, there has to be a catch. There's actually good people out here in this world that all they want is somebody to love and some and to be loved. All right. And there are people in the workplace, believe it or not, that are willing to help you out and do what you ask. Not every workplace, there's a challenge, a struggle. And I'm sure some of you all are like, that's right. I love my job. I like my job. My boss is great. I can ask him for something and he'll do it for me okay all right let's continue all my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of noble character in verse 12 although it is true that i am near of kin there is a kinsman redeemer nearer than i stay here for the night and in the morning if he wants to redeem good let him redeem but if he is not willing as surely as the lord lives i will do it Uh oh he's stepping up to the plate lie here until morning so here we have this kinsman redeemer that is supposed to be helping Ruth out, okay? Because he uh, is just one who is supposed to do the right thing. And back in those days, doing the right thing was taking care of family, okay? Um, according to the study Bible, uh it says that uh, Ruth and Naomi must have assumed that Boaz was their closest relative. Boaz, too, must have already considered marrying Ruth because his answer to her shows he had been thinking about it. You know, when he said he was going to take care of her, uh, he, you know, or basically do all that she asked, to be more specific. Um, he couldn't have considered marrying Naomi because she was probably too old to bear any more children, okay? One man in the city was a nearer relative. This is where that kinsman redeemer comes into play. Then Boaz. And this man had the first right to take Ruth as his wife. So he's, he's showing once again, he's a respectful individual. He realizes that there's somebody else that was more um, qualified, if you will, to, uh, to um, take Ruth on as his wife. Some of you all are more qualified to do quite a few things than others but are you strategically setting yourself up in the right place at the right time to be selected lord jesus i hope some of you are catching hold to this because you pray these kind of prayers and then you're looking for these nuggets of wisdom 
and voila, they show up in the most unlikeliest places. Okay, and um, now if this kinsman redeemer chose not uh, to uh, marry Ruth, then Boaz could marry her. Okay, now let's continue on. So here she she followed through with what she said or what her um what her mother-in-law told her to do okay but once again there's some instruction okay verse 13 boaz says stay here for the night and in the morning he wants if he wants to redeem good let him redeem now why would he have her stay here for the night well he didn't want to send her out there in the dark okay uh, and risk um, you know, uh, have her take that chance of getting hurt or, you know, something along those lines. So basically my point is he's showing that he cares for her and a man that truly cares for you or a woman for that matter is not going to put you in danger. Okay. Um, and I don't know, I felt like I had to say that because I know I come across these individuals who experience all sorts of abuses, verbal abuse, physical abuse, and so forth. The minute you see that a person is acting in a way that's uncaring, cold, you know, just this attitude with you, um, and they even go so far as to threat violence or actually do it, you've got to think, what is that person's mindset like concerning you, okay? I, I know I kind of went off topic a little bit, but it's crucial that some people catch hold of this because they have this uh, mentality of dysfunction, when it comes to relationships because they saw nothing but dysfunction and experienced nothing but dysfunction for so long that they don't know they don't know that God can set up a kinsman redeemer okay hallelujah and praise the lord okay uh let's see all right so um Boaz had told her but if he is not willing as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. As I said earlier, he stepped up to the plate. Lie here until morning. So she did. She listened. She followed instructions. Some women are not going to do it. This right here, I will tell you, is a test of submission. So <laughs> for some of you all, if you can't listen to the man prior to marriage, what makes you think that once you get married, you're going to listen to him? Okay. Um, in verse 14, so she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized. And he said, don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. Okay, once again, that's another test. Okay, he doesn't want the business getting out there in the street because people would, of course, judge her, judge him. What was, she, what were you doing over there that time of night? Okay, what were you up to? Okay, verse 15, he also said, bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did, so he poured it. He poured into it six measures of barley and put it on her. Then he went back to town. Now notice he gave her something and she didn't have to give up anything. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Some of you all need to listen and men too. That's in these relationships, especially with someone older. She didn't have to give up anything to get something. Other than follow some in simple instructions. Okay. And then he blessed her. And this is what you need to understand is that. If God is not telling you to do certain things, to get certain things, or if you know that it goes against the scripture, why put yourself out there like that? Lord Jesus. And then a lot of times when people take matters in their own hands and do things to win favor, it usually blows up in their face later on. <laughs> Lord. All right. We're going to continue. So he went back to town in verse 16. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, how did it go? My daughter. Okay. So there's always somebody in the circle, right? That's what they want to know what's going on. What, what happened? Okay. It could be a mother, a friend, a sister. And sometimes we're hesitant about telling people good, bad, or otherwise, because we don't want to be judged. We don't want them giving us any more advice, possibly whatever the case may be. But when some good things are happening to you, you should share them with those that really appreciate like, love you, those that are not haters, if you will. <laughs> okay, so Naomi asked the question, and Ruth is going to give her some details. 
The scripture says, then she told her everything Boaz had done for her. So that shows that they have a good relationship because she felt like she could tell her everything. Okay. Um, even though, uh, Boaz earlier was, uh, saying, don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. Okay. Which was in that atmosphere, but she's talking to a trustworthy confidant by all means share what happened. Okay. It's not like Naomi's going to run back and tell, uh, you know, Boaz, but sometimes we share information with the wrong individuals, the type that are always going back and reporting everything you say to others. And this can be to our detriment. So I can even hear in the spirit, the Lord says, choose your friends wisely, choose them wisely. Watch how they interact with other people before you start giving up everything in your conversation okay some things we just have to keep to ourselves especially if we don't want people worrying especially if we don't want people uh trying to strategically set themselves up to take what we got you see <laughs> so let us continue so she told she told everything Bo has had done for her and in verse 17 and added he gave me these six measures of barley saying don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed handed Okay, so that was the type of uh, thing that also shows his character, Boaz's character to the mother-in-law. You know, he did something nice and it went beyond just he and Ruth, but he also blessed the mother-in-law. Now, if you want to get in someone's good graces, bless those parents. Okay, bless uh, the best friend, bless someone other than the person that you're with because you're going to win some favor with those individuals. In verse 18, it says that Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Okay. And a man who is on a mission will not rest. If you ever fell in love with someone and he said, I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about you all night. Oh, I mean, I just want this to happen and that to happen. That's a man that's about business. He wants to take care of what he said he was going to take care of. He's going to do what he said he was going to do. A man of his word. Okay. A woman of her word. Some women are like that too. They're about let's take care of it. Let's get it done. You've got to appreciate people like this. Okay. Okay. So in the study Bible, um, referring to, um, Chapter 3, verse 18, it says, Naomi implied that Boaz would follow through with his promise at once. You see, he obviously had a reputation for keeping his word and would not rest until his task was completed. Such reliable people stand out in any age and culture. Do others regard you as one who will do what you say? Keeping your word and following through on assignments should be high on anyone's priority list. Building a reputation for integrity. However, must be done one brick, one act at a time. So you may have had a past where you told lies, or you were dishonest, people didn't really care for you too much, but there's always that opportunity to build your integrity back up again. Getting around individuals that will appreciate your efforts, putting your best foot forward in all that you do personally and professionally. It can be done. It will be done in Jesus name. You didn't just come across this audio just by happenstance. You came across this audio because you desire some great things to happen in your life. And I'm trusting and believing in the Lord that you will indeed be blessed and highly favored. And I would love to hear from those who have been blessed by these messages on YouTube channel N M Enterprise 7. I thank you so much for listening. And as always, to God be the glory. Please do tune in to the last of this series of the Book of Ruth.